In this video today, we're going to be taking a look at how to calculate the derivative of an exponential function. And over here for my formula, I am using the formulas in terms of u, where u is going to be a function of x. So we're taking the derivative of e to the u, and there again, u is a function of x. So that's going to be e to the u times u prime. Okay, so we'll work out about uh, five examples, uh, some easy ones here at the beginning, and then we'll get a little bit more challenging towards the end. For this first one, we've got uh, d dx of e raised to the 2x minus 1. All right, that 2x minus 1 right there is my u. So when I take the derivative, I'm going to have e to the u times the derivative of that exponent right there. So e to the u would be an e raised to the 2x minus 1. Um, I'm going to put in that extra step of showing times the derivative, ddx, of that 2x minus 1. That's a real simple derivative. You wouldn't necessarily have to do this, but just for um, implementing the formula here, I'm going to do this. All right, now derivative of 2x minus 1 is going to be just a 2. So e raised to the 2x minus 1 times 2. And then I would probably clean that up for a final answer, leaving that with that 2 coefficient out in front. So 2 e to the 2x minus 1. Okay, going on to the second example. We're taking the derivative of e raised to the negative 3 over x. All right, so again, just a function of x right up there in that exponent. So it's going to be e to the u. So it'll be e to the negative 3 over x times that derivative of that exponent. So the derivative of negative 3 over x. All right, now that is a quotient. Um, generally, my students, if at all possible, try to avoid the quotient rule. You could do the quotient rule there, or you could move that x up to the top and make it a negative 1, because right now it's an x to the first. So I think that's the way I'm going to show this. So it's going to be an e to the negative 3 over x times the derivative of a negative 3x to the negative 1. That's going to make that derivative a lot simpler there. So taking the derivative there, I'm going to have an e raised to the negative 3 over x and then times a positive 3 e to the, or x to the negative 2. All right, again, let's clean this up a little bit. I'll probably pull that 3 out in front and move this x to the negative 2 down to the bottom to make it a positive exponent, and I'll probably go ahead and leave that in the numerator. So 3 e to the negative 3 over x all over an x squared. All right, probably just leaving that um, in that form right there since that original equation had the negative in it. Um, for the third example here, um, if <clears throat> you have a product rule or a quotient rule or any other rule implemented, then you've got to apply that as well, and then they will just start to put these e functions in anywhere. So that's what we've got going on right here. We've got an x squared times an e to the x. All right, so this would be a straight product rule here. So taking the derivative, I'd have a y prime is equal to product rule, the first x squared times the derivative of the second, so d dx of e to the x, plus the second e to the x times the derivative d dx of that x squared. All right, uh, going through and actually calculating those derivatives now, I would have an x squared times e to the x would be e to the u, u prime, so the derivative of that x right there would be a 1, so I'm just going to have an e to the x, plus e to the x, derivative of that x squared would be a 2x. All right, now looking at that, um, cleaning it up a little bit, I'd probably take out a greatest common factor. I could take out an x and an e to the x of each one of those. So y prime equals x e to the x. That in this term then would leave me with an x, and in this term would leave me with a 2. Okay, so for a third example, we're going to do a natural log function here. We've got y equals natural log of 1 plus e to the x over 1 minus e to the x. All right, now let's do a little recalling of a previous derivative that you have learned, which would be the derivative d dx of natural log of u being u prime over u. 
Okay, so keeping that in mind, we're taking the derivative of a natural log function. That natural log function just happens to have an e to the x in it. All right, so my u is going to be this quotient right here. So actually, let's go ahead and write that down because this is will get a little little complicated. Um, u equals writing that quotient down one plus e to the x over 1 minus e to the x. Alright, so if I'm going to implement this formula of u prime over u, and I'm letting u be this, I need to calculate the derivative of this, alright, and then this will be my u. Okay, so that is quotient rule. We're going to go ahead and crank out quotient rule on that right there. So I'm going to have a u prime is equal to the um, bottom, 1 minus e to the x, times the derivative of the top. I'm going to go ahead and actually just do that derivative. Derivative of 1 will be to 0. Derivative of e to the x is e to the x minus the top. So 1 plus e to the x times the derivative of the bottom. This goes to 0. Derivative of this would be a negative e to the x. And then all over that bottom squared. 1 minus e to the x quantity squared. <clears throat> all right, now up there on top, I think I'm going to distribute, all right, and carry through some signs here. So let's do a little bit of simplifying. So u prime distributing here, I'm going to have an e to the x minus an e to the 2x. When multiplying like bases, add those exponents. All right, and then distributing here, this negative times this negative is going to make it a positive e to the x. And then negative times, and again, this would be a negative, and this would be a negative, so it'll make it another positive, e to the 2x. All over that same denominator, which I haven't changed yet, e to the x raised to the second power. Okay, now I can go through and simplify some things on that numerator. The negative e to the 2x and the positive e to the 2x is going to cross out. And I can combine those like terms here for a u prime of a 2e to the x all over 1 minus e to the x is quantity squared. All right, so that is my u prime. Okay, now if I'm implementing, to take this derivative, if I'm implementing this formula, natural log of u is u prime over u. I've got my u prime calculated and I've got my u calculated. So at this point, now I can actually implement the derivative here. So, y prime is going to be equal to u prime, 2e to the x, all over 1 minus e to the x quantity squared, all over u, which is a 1 plus e to the x, over a 1 minus e to the x. Okay, now because that ended up being such a big quotient, let's move this because that looks a little tacky right there. Let's move that down to here y prime is equal to. All right, now I've got a complex fraction here, so I'm going to multiply through by the least common denominator, so I'm going to multiply through by that 1 minus e to the x quantity squared. I'm going to multiply by 1 minus e to the x quantity squared, and 1 minus e to the x quantity squared. All right, in that numerator, those two things are going to go away. That's going to leave me with a 2e to the x in my numerator. Over here, I've got one of these quantities on the bottom. I've got two in the top, so this will go away, and one of those will go away. In the bottom, that's going to then leave me with a 1 plus e to the x times a 1 minus e to the x. All right, and it probably would be perfectly acceptable to stop right there, but hopefully <clears throat> you can look at this and recognize that this is the factored form of the difference of two squares. So I could go ahead and multiply this out really, really easy since it is going to be that difference of two squares. I could square the first one, put a minus sign on it, and then square the second one. Okay, so that would then be a 2e to the x all over a 1 minus e to the 2x as a final answer there. All right, so a little bit um, more work there, a little bit more steps that you've got to go through, a lot of work with that being a quotient rule, but again, still not too awful bad. All right, now let's go ahead and do one more example. Just kind of show you how to handle something so that you don't always have to do that quotient rule. Um, here would be another one. 
where we've got y equals e to the x minus e to the negative x all over 2. Okay, and again, you're seeing that quotient, and if you wanted to, you could do a quotient rule right there, or you could recognize that there's a little one-half there that you could pull out, all right, and change the problem a little bit. So um, I would probably rewrite this to y equals a one-half, and then an e to the x minus an e to the negative x. Okay, that's going to then let me do a product rule, all right, which basically is also constant multiplier rule. you got a constant right there, so the second half of the product rule is just going to fall out, which is going to make it relatively simple here. So if I take the derivative, um, I'll have a y prime is equal to the first, which would be that one half, times the derivative of this. All right, well, e to the x is e to the x. All right, minus e to the negative x. Well, e to the negative x is going to be... Um, negative e to the negative x. And so the two negatives there will make that a positive. So plus e to the negative x. All right, now if you wanted to go ahead and finish product rule, you can. Um, just to prove to yourself that that second part does um, fall out there. Okay, minus an e to the x minus e to the negative x and then times the derivative of that one half, which is going to be zero. Um, so this is going to fall out anyway. It doesn't make any difference what that is. Uh, and then if you wanted to go ahead and rewrite this, putting it back in that form that you originally had there, y prime is going to be equal to e to the x plus e to the negative x, then all over 2. All right, a little bit easier probably than tackling um, the quotient rule on that. So about five little examples of taking the derivative with e to the x and having that also that function also placed in a variety of other functions such as natural log or quotient rule or product rules. Definitely thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Thanks.